Welcome to all Caribbean entrepreneurs. If you've been ready and waiting to take your business digital and get paid online while you sip something strong on the beach, this podcast is for you. We'll hear from the Caribbean's finest entrepreneurs on topics like e-commerce, business development, brand building, social media, their wins and failures. This is the only place in the region helping you navigate the digital age from the Caribbean's perspective. This is Digipreneur FM. And now, let's give it up for the Digiboss himself, Mr. Karan Rose. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody tuning in to another episode of the Digipreneur FM podcast. And you guys know the deal. It's your boy, Mr. Karan Rose. DJ. DJ, fade us all the way out. DJ, fade us all the way out. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. How are you guys and gals doing across the world? How is my Digipreneur family doing? It is June 3rd. We're on episode number 76. And it's so good to be here. <laughs> I know I say that all the time, but I really mean that. I really mean that. You know, it's it's great to be here, man. It's great to be here. So this episode, in this episode, we got an opportunity to sit down with the JTDA. That is the Jamaica Technology and Digital Alliance. All right. And this is an organization that, you know, I've done some work with. I've had a lot of, ext- I've had extensive conversations with them over the past couple of months. And things that they're doing in Jamaica that they are now looking to spread throughout the rest of the Caribbean, it's, it's needed on so many different levels. It's needed on so many different levels. So this is our first interview of the year. Can't even believe that, but you guys know that this year has been kind of hectic for me. But nonetheless, this is our first Digipreneur interview of the year. So I wanted, so we recorded the conversation and I wanted to bring that conversation that we had uh, to the Digipreneur podcast family because, again, there's just so much information um, about the the JTDA. There's so many things that they're doing that we need. And I know this is going to help somebody listening in. Right. I know this is going to help somebody listen, listening in with all of the new initiatives that they are launching. It's going to be really exciting, and you guys can definitely check them out. Visit their website, JTDA. I believe it's .org. Let me just confirm. Yeah, and it's .org. So that's JTDA.org to learn more about them. But again, this conversation was a recorded conversation between myself and the president, Adrian Dunkley, the vice president, Twitty Ann Thomas, the former president, Stacey Hines, um, who is just a wealth full of knowledge. Uh, so, yeah, you guys will definitely enjoy this conversation with them. And again, you're going to learn about the initiatives that they are bringing from Jamaica and spreading throughout the entire Caribbean region. All right. So without further ado, let us get right into that conversation with the JTDA, and how they are helping Caribbean entrepreneurs across the region. Let's go. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. How are you guys doing? It's been such a long time since we've done one of our Digipreneur interviews. And today, we have some special guests. we got a really good topic We're going to be talking to the JTDA, the Jamaica Technology and Digital Alliance, and they have a lot of things that they are looking to spread throughout the Caribbean that is going to benefit all of our entrepreneurs and startups in the IT sector. And I mean, I had to go out and get the brass themselves because we need it right from the horse's mouth. Everything that we're going to be talking about today, we got to get it fresh from them. All right. So what I want to do is I want to bring in our special guest for this evening. All right. And then we're going to jump right into the conversation about the JTDA and what they are bringing for the Caribbean. Okay. Can we do that, folks? I think we can. 
So, we have in the building for our Digipreneur live today, we have three special guests. We have the incoming president, Adrian Dunkley. Now, Adrian is a technologist and a decision scientist. Ooh, I got to be one of those one day. With over 12 years of experience in data science and AI across the finance, travel, retail, marketing, risk management, and customer experience. Listen, it's a pleasure to have him. But we got some other guests. We got some other heavy hitters with us. We have the new vice president of the JTDA, Twitty Ann Thomas. Twitty Ann is an experienced CEO and sales expert with a demonstrated history of achieving revenue growth. And in a time like this, we want revenue. She <laughs> has a history in growing revenue through innovative thinking, sales operational optimization, and empowerment. There's that big E, that E that we love. And no stranger to the Digipreneur platform is the Former JTDA boss herself, the woman of tech who was named top 50, Miss Stacy Hines. Stacy, how are you doing? Twitty and Adrian, how are you guys doing this evening? Good. We're doing great. Thanks for having us. No, of course, of course. Listen, I'm excited because every single time, we hear so i'm over in trinidad we have listeners from from throughout the rest of the caribbean but every time we hear jamaica's name jamaica's mm. launching something it's some big mm. initiative it's some ipo it's something mm. that the rest of us in the caribbean mm. wish we could either have here in our countries too or that you guys can spread the love and bring it for us so we can partake in said initiatives that you guys have been bubbling in Jamaica. So I know you guys have some great things in store for us today. But just to get started, how are you guys doing? Adrian, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> to the end, to the end, how are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. Very good. Lovely. And Stacy. Why are you going, Stacey? Why, Martello? Erin, I'm happy to be back with the Digipreneur family. I have mm -hmm. my celebratory glass with me because uh -huh. we're bringing a chair to Trinidad and Guyana and Barbados and St. Lucia and everywhere that listen to Digipreneur. Oh, right. coming mm, connect. Uh, that's how you're talking about. Lovely. Honestly, Stacey, it is, it, is, it is always a pleasure. It is always a pleasure, right? So for this evening, for this conversation, like I said, I know you guys have been cooking up some initiatives that you guys are now bringing throughout the rest of the Caribbean. So we want to get right into that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, first things first, in case people have not heard of the JTDA, can you guys dive into what is the JTDA? Twitty Ann, would you like to kick us off tonight? Yeah, sure. So the JTDA is stands for Jamaica Technology and Digital Alliance. What we seek to do is to enable and empower IT professionals through the use of technology. So the role of the Alliance is really to promote ICT industry and the effective and efficient utilization of IT for the benefit of Jamaica. Right. It is really an organization shape, you know, to play the role of shaping the technology future of mm -hmm. Jamaica. Like her vision says, is to enable people, businesses by providing access, influence, and empowerment through technology. I love Stacey, it. you want to add to that? Yeah, for sure. I think one of the key things that um, we want to elevate, which is why this conversation is coming to this platform, mm. is that the JTDA is an alliance. And the reason why it was created or rebranded as an alliance, because originally we were considered the Jamaica Computer Society. That's who we were for 44 years. And then we came in and we turned things, right? Because we are now 2022 and 2020. At the time, I would have to do some things differently. And right. we recognize that the Caribbean is um, 40 million strong. And we believe that we can make IT good for all of the Caribbean, not just for Jamaica. Mm. So that any 
access, influence, and empowerment through technology is now what we want to take to the world, well, to the Caribbean world. Yeah. Sure. I love it. <laughs> Adrian, what, do you, what, do you, what are you hoping as the new incoming president, you know, what kind of impact are you hoping that the JTDA can bring under your, under your leadership? Well, I'm going to say I'm pretty lucky. Stacy put some things in that the market wasn't even ready for. Mm. Pre-planned things, things that people haven't even thought of yet. So kind of like I'm just sliding into a sock right now, putting it in a shoe and just walking. Right, right, um, right. I want to build on the work of, like Stacy said, the alliance. And sure, technology isn't just type, type, computer and stuff. It's all about people. It's all about success and achieving objectives and technology makes us more human so we're trying to get that out there as well as you know bringing the young persons in developing them make sure that everybody has an opportunity to experience so like you you've developed basically right. this new profession that hasn't even been around for like 10 years right showing the young person that they they want to be in ai they want to be in cyber security they want to be in the metaverse as a profession showing them that it's not just an option it's an option that you can use to provide for yourself and, and, and i like that because i think especially with what you just with what you just ended off on when we are hearing metaverse nfts a lot of these things are still buzzwords people haven't even wrapped their minds around you know where the technology is and i hear like even in trinidad we have a couple of we have a couple of groups who have started to really push hard on, you know, Web 3.0. And I'm like, I love the fact that we're having these conversations, but we still have so much to teach. People still have to grasp Web 2.0. But again, I think there's so much opportunity. And the fact that you guys are doubling down on this and really pushing the education is yeah. needed because it's a wild, wild west out here. And, you know, people don't really know exactly what they can do with this stuff until an organization like you guys comes around. And start to mm -hmm. show us and teach us and show us what the possibilities are. All right? right. So, um, Stacy, let me ask you something, Stacy. I have a question for you, Stacy. Okay. So tell me, tell me a bit about how you guys are serving your members and your community through that vision that the JTDA has started. Well, um, it's twofold, and I know that you have, um, we're probably going to talk about this a little bit later on, so mm -hmm. I'll talk about one aspect of that first. Uh, because really and truly, persons aren't going to want to necessarily commit to something unless there's something in it for them, right? So right. ultimately, we want to make it clear that there are benefits available to you, and I'm certainly an example of those benefits, right? right. So for the professionals, you know, for the individuals who are, in the tech field, or maybe you are in university studying tech, right? Um, the JTDA uh, or the Alliance is a great place for you to come and get supplemental training, whether mm. it's through online courses or we do events during the course of the year. As you remember, last year we had BizTech, um, right. that's our biggest event every year, and there's always just so much to learn and grasp. And right. it's, 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 it's great to get that kind of insight from the real world you know right. it's one thing when you're in the classroom and you learn the theory but when you're actually hearing from the technocrats themselves it's a whole other story right so there's a training then there's the mentorship right mm. because you have a lot of persons who are sitting in the seats that have been there done that wear the t-shirt write the book literally we have several authors tech authors right. global tech authors right and membership mentorship opportunities are there building that network creating community which is which is something that i feel that we don't necessarily do very well um, on a broad scale as techies you might find a little bubbles like a developers group or your ai group or your security group but right inter mm -hmm. that ecosystem you know right. and so allows, say again you bring everybody yeah. together mm. so yeah it allows you to be plugged into that into that ecosystem one of the things that um, I certainly saw a lot of persons take advantage of during my presidency, and I still anticipate seeing that, is having access to sit on boards. So mm -hmm. the JTA um, and I'm sure other computer societies, a key responsibility is actually lobbying and policy setting for the industry as a whole. Right. So being able to participate in that at a board level, 
when you're a member, you get access to that. So we actually get requests from ministry for persons mm -hmm. to sit on boards when we're writing policy, when we have acts that are coming up like the Cyber Crimes Act or the Privacy and Protection Act, those last two that just came out. Mm -hmm. I actually sat with the groups that went through each line and submitted different corrections to the lawmakers. Like, that's some big people job. Right. You know? Correct. So, so you, have access to, you have access to participate in the shaping and the framing of the industry. Like, who doesn't want to have that footprint in the sand, you know? So there is that available to you. And, of course, the other things that I think... Um, Communities offer in general um, access to jobs, job postings, um, and of course, affiliate partnerships. Mm -hmm. um, if you are an entrepreneur or even a budding entrepreneur like your audience in particular, yeah, Karen, this is a great place to have a platform. Right. So we're going to talk about platforms in a little bit, but really and truly, guys, right. this is a great place for you to put up your, your business flag and say, hey, I'm over here doing this great thing. Mm. You know, come and work with me. Come and partner with me. Come and buy my stuff. You right. know, whichever thing you need. So those are just some of the things that um, that we create and make available for persons who choose to become members. Gotcha, Twitty. And did you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, what Stacy has said um, is really reiterate what is it that we're trying to do. I'm not sure um, if there's any other body such as ours in the Caribbean, but it really provides a platform. I mean, small SMEs are giving the feedback. You know, nobody would know about my business with aligning with the JTD or becoming a member. And my business is now highlighted, giving them a huge platform through the partnership with the Jamaica Observer, which is a local newspaper. Right. So getting them highlighted and, you know, persons who are in tech, who have been in tech and helped to shape, shape Jamaica over the last maybe 25, 30 years. Nobody <laughs> know about them. Um, tech people are usually, you know, they're, they, they're very smart. They're very bright. You know, they normally be in their little bubble and they do their work and but nobody knows about them. Right. So what the JT does is to highlight those persons that really play a role in shaping Jamaica and the Caribbean, depending on the, uh, the company that they work with, to make that impact. So what we do is to bring them to the forefront. And as Stacey mentioned, the lobbying on different boards, you know, really to shape the ICT future in Jamaica. So we do have a, a part to play and a role. And a, and a voice in, in making sure, you know, those things are done. So it is a very powerful um, alliance and um, we're grateful to serve um, the, the members of, 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 of the Alliance and Jamaica. So I'm, I'm really, really proud to be a part of this organization and really to have a say in tech and to have persons lobby and, you know, to put their, their, their views forward. Yeah, that is, that is extremely powerful because, I mean, one of the big complaints here in Trinidad is that you know, the young talent, the people that have the ideas, the bright minds are just silenced. You know, they make suggestions. We make a lot of noise, but it all ultimately falls on deaf ears. We're not in the rooms making the policies. And I mean, it's visible because the policies are not being crafted in ways right. that make sense. And the conversations from the top down are just not happening around around technology around smes it's and when and when, when they do talk about it, it's lip service so what you guys have created over in jamaica mm -hmm. i think is definitely mm -hmm. a blueprint for other countries throughout the caricom region to mm -hmm. strive mm -hmm. for all right mm -hmm. so adrian mm -hmm. now what do you believe that what do you believe the jtda membership means why does it why does it matter why do you think the membership with you guys matters I haven't checked with legal about this exactly, but it's no longer <laughs> revenue to <call> us. Uh, <laughs> let me look right there. But it's about influence, uh, mm -hmm. getting exposed to the community. Uh, so Tan Stacey has said, you won't even realize that you have people like-minded like you. You could eventually start a company with people you meet in the JTDA. Right. right? You, can, you can access specific skills, individuals that you didn't even know that were in the Caribbean. So I, mm. I actually went to BizTech. Like, we'll talk about BizTech after. I met people there. I right. got clients there. I got exposure there. There's a lot of value in that. And there are other events that aren't even on air as big as that, but there's a lot of value for your company. Right. It's about learning. It's about growing your company. It's about getting exposure and influencing the Caribbean as a whole. So it, it's something that doesn't make any sense not to join. We'll just right. say that. <laughs> It's just about you coming in and then leaving your stamp on things. And we have so many benefits, too many benefits, right? 
for you as an right. individual and you as a company. Right. So, yeah, full pitch. Just draw it. Just draw it. It's, it's like, why not? Right. Why right. not join? Yeah. 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 Um, be able to, I mean, a lot of persons come. Sorry, Karen. No, jump in, jump in. A lot in. of persons complain and they're like, okay, you know, the government is putting together this policy and, you know, they don't consult us. So, being a member of the JTD allows you that access to those persons that are creating and for you to be a part of shaping the technology future for Jamaica. So being a part of the JTDA, anybody in tech should be a member of the JTDA. I mean, it, it's very, it's, it's that simple. I mean, it really helps. And for, for you to really, you know, give your voice or your opinion and your input in stamping the technology future of, of, of our country and the wider Caribbean. Now, I, I, I gotta ask, do you, do you guys have a a roadmap or a, a mastermind as to how countries or people outside of Jamaica, how we could form our own uh, alliance to be able to approach the government to try to get on these boards to influence policy. Is there a mastermind group so that you guys could train some of us how to go and talk to them? Stacey, take that one. <laughs> Stacey? <laughs> yeah, so, well, truth be told, I actually think that the mastermind um, exists in the computer society. So I know Trinidad already has a computer society. Um, so I'll just throw that out there. And I'm not okay with all the different um, aspects of the progress that they've made so mm -hmm. far, especially these days. However, I do know that there is work that's been done or that's being done. I think the mastermind is really a culmination of the different, um, the different arms that are out there. So one of the things that I think is really critical that has come to the fore uh, for, through the JTDA, through the Alliance, is this partnership with what used to be the British Computer Society. They are now the IT Institute, IT mm -hmm. Chartered Institute, or Chartered Institute of IT Professionals, excuse me, um, uh, or the BCS, right? And what the BCS did was they approached me uh, to, when, during my presidency to talk about you know the work that was being done because of course they're seeing things happening they're seeing a lot of movements and they see jtd all around and they're like okay possibly you guys need support and that's ultimately what computer societies are out there to do they're out right. there to really create the infrastructure for technology professionals to thrive but also for it to be good for all right that's mm. ultimately what the whole vision is and so through that conversation with them, I said, you know, I think it's great to start with Jamaica, but ultimately what we want is a Caribbean mastermind. Right. We want a Caribbean infrastructure that makes IT good for all. And so that's really where um, our Member PLUS program uh, evolved. And that's what we're actually rolling out. So when you talk about this roadmap, we mm. want to build that through the Member PLUS program because we now have access to more global as, um, resources through the BCS. Right. And with that support, we are better enabled in building out our own, what I'm calling it infrastructure, but it's really a group of persons working together towards the same vision. Right? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So that, the, the, uh, we got to go ahead. Welcome to your member plus. What's going on? You're a mm -hmm. techie. Yeah, <laughs> I was now about to say I'm I'm ready to go and log on right now and start to and start to register, <laughs> because as Adrian said, why not? <laughs> so you guys have been stacking up. The JTDA has been stacking up quite a number of wins as of late. Can you can you walk us through what are some of those key wins that you guys are super proud about? Um, well, I would say that the one that I just mentioned in terms of the partnership with the BCS, because that's an official partnership mm -hmm. where we're actively working to make IT good for all across the Caribbean region and really create a, a more fulsome community right. of IT professionals. So I, that's one win, right? Another right. win um, that we're really proud of, and as, as Adrian said, he's really going to be seeking to move that forward were, is, is really building out support systems for the ecosystem, right? So I strongly believe in the ecosystem model. Um, it's the thing that you'll see with like your um, your Airbnb and your Amazon and all these different community. Apple has a really strong ecosystem model 
all these different companies in tech are using the ecosystem strategy to mm -hmm. spread their tentacles into other industries without necessarily mm -hmm. having to switch over, right? I mean, right. when did you, he's not a, a, um, a jewelry company, but yet still they came up with a watch. Right. So similarly, mm -hmm. Um, our ecosystem is is built with different enablers. So we have the public sector enablers, we have the private sector enablers, we have organizations like ours and like the IT, um, the Institute for Chartered IT Professionals or the BCS. So you have that ecosystem and you have the, the funding agencies, the donor agencies. Now, how do we bring that all together or how do we serve that community? Well, the best way to serve that is through tech, right? So right. we have two platforms to support that ecosystem. First platform is a marketplace called Go Digital, and it is built with the digipreneur in mind, right? <laughs> you, digital, you have a business, whether it is that you are a tech provider or you are a small, medium-sized business owner, you can go onto this platform and you can connect. You know, it's like Fiverr for the Caribbean, okay? Okay. So... So that platform is there, um, mm -hmm. and we're going to be looking to expand that platform um, over the next couple of years through the hopeful support of these donor agencies and funding groups. And then the second platform, which I'm really excited about because I think it has so much potential for the Caribbean, is our tech fund, which is a part of the alliance, right? So essentially what that allows us to do is it allows whether you're an entrepreneur looking for startup money for your tech company or your right. school looking to connect and get devices or you have an idea for some kind of solution that is going to solve you know, climate change and it's a tech-related solution, you can literally use this crowdfunding platform that is specifically targeted for the Caribbean person. Mm -hmm. So we want Caribbean people to have a place that they can go and say, hey, I'm creating this amazing thing. I need your support. Because all the other funding platforms, I mean, who can find you on GoFundMe? So much other things that are going on it, right? Mm -hmm. right. So, <laughs> so the platform allows you to, to have your voice heard, not just by your Caribbean um, mm -hmm. counterparts, your Caribbean community, but also our diaspora, which is huge, millions of Massive, people in the diaspora. Yeah. Um, and so we saw through the pandemic where there were just lots of communities in need, schools in need. And, um, and this platform was, in essence, a response to that and hopefully a place that persons could create support for themselves for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Go ahead, Tudian. No, no, I was just saying to Stacey, um, the Tech Alliance um, Fund is very, very powerful. I mean, a lot of persons um, are not aware of it as yet. Um, we're planning on promoting that a little bit more because, as Stacey said, if you have a startup firm and you're looking for funding, which is the hardest thing to get money from the bank because of the, you know, the different red tape that they put on for small businesses. So we have a platform here that can get you the funding through, you know, persons in Jamaica, either through the government, even the diaspora to tap into that. So if you're interested in booking or, or to put your project, on the platform, you could reach out to us at the JTDA, we'll assist you with that. So we'd really love to see more persons, our SMEs or small, any any cause with regards to tech or, you know, changing tech, just really to list their project on that platform to get the money um, that they need. And um, the diaspora is very in tune with what we're doing and they have money to invest and they have different things. And we have connection with other groups, um, such as the Development Bank of Jamaica, which is the bank that you know is connected with government to provide funding to um to SMEs and and, and businesses. So putting your project on the, the Tech Alliance um, funding platform is really something that and uh, I don't think a lot of members know that they have access to that. We're planning on making a bigger noise over it so persons are aware that this is something that's available through the JTDA, whether you're a member or not. You don't have to be a member to, to be listed on the platform. Right. Um, we encourage you to be a member, but you don't have to be a member to be listed on the platform. So it's some really cool things. And, you know, Stacey started a lot of these, you know, kudos to her. Um, we are now incoming and to really build on what she has left. And um, I, I, I in, in hearing about these things myself, I was like, whoa, yeah. you guys are really doing this. So I'm really, really excited to kind of, 
you know, pick up where Stacey left off, myself and Adrian and the other executives to really push these things and really get them into adoption for, for, the, for Jamaica and the wider Caribbean. Yeah, no, that is big because funding still remains as like one of the one of the kryptonites to anybody building a business and looking to really scale. And even when the diaspora is thinking about, you know, moving back to the Caribbean, um, mm -hmm. a lot of people that I talk to want to move back home. They want to move back. Some of these people, some people are tired of North America or they're tired of the UK. They want to come back. But one of the things that is stopping them is they mm -hmm. want to feel like they're not going back in time. So we have yeah. to invest in companies, invest in projects mm -hmm. to bring things up. And unless we do that, you right. know, some of our best talent isn't looking to return back because they just don't want to start, you know, so far back when it comes mm -hmm. to when it when it comes to, you know, just building building the society. So the tech fund is great. And I mean, I I, mm -hmm. I definitely want you guys to make that bigger noise because again the more people realize that it's out there and if the mm -hmm. diaspora the diaspora has the money if they can invest you know mm -hmm. let them put let them let them you know start being a part of the rebuilding project that is that's happening in the caribbean mm -hmm. you know Absolutely. so in in um moving on from the from the tech fund you guys have the Digital Transformation Institute can you guys mm -hmm. dive into that Okay, I'll take that one. Um, mm -hmm. So the Digital Transformation Institute is actually a partnership between my company, Epic Transformation, which I launched upon exiting presidency um, mm -hmm. just a couple of months ago. Um, and it's essentially a platform for the Caribbean entrepreneurs to get training. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, it was it, the, the, the brainchild behind the, the Transformation Institute um, was a boot camp that um, I hosted back in uh, when pandemic just landed. And it's something that we use the, the JTDA to promote quite heavily to help entrepreneurs. Because, you know, the pandemic was really that big kind of shock to the yeah. chest for many entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. right? And they didn't know whether they were coming or going. Right. Um, so it was like, you know, how to get these guys from offline to online. And that's literally where right. Otto Boot Camp came from. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And from that, um, I partnered with a company in Canada that is that is going to be supporting the launch of this platform to allow for us, the JTDA, um, along with Epic, to put out training content. Um, and even like Adrian's company, um, Startup Analytics, they have train analytics and they have a lot of courses, tons of content that could also mm -hmm. live on the institute where persons mm -hmm. anywhere can have access to get that training that they need. Because truth be told, Karen, as you know, um, everything is about the knowledge gap, right? You need to learn, unlearn, relearn in order for us to stay, well, we can't stay ahead of technology anymore, but in order yeah. for us to stay abreast of up to date with the technology. And so yeah. the Institute is really going to create an opportunity for us to do that and for our members to enjoy discounts to accessing that training. So it's on demand, available all the time. You don't just go to a conference and, you know, you yeah. take a class. <laughs> oh my God. Right? It's always available. And it's something that through the partnership with the JTDA, we're seeking to ensure we have the certified courses because, you know, people like the certification thing. You know, so it's, yeah. it's I to really be one of the things that will help us to to bridge that big divide and and be able to take our our entrepreneurial skills to a whole other level so that you're talking now and i'm and i was thinking of something and i want to throw this to adrian adrian mm -hmm. why do you think we are so averse to learning a lot of the new digital skills needed for digital transformation to happen because you, you you talk to the average person when you start thinking digital transformation they are already signed off what what what's what do you think is going on why people are you know just very risk averse to learning some of these new digital skills so that we could move forward i don't know some of the feedback we've gotten is a fear that you're gonna somehow replace them that they've been doing something for 15 years they got it down pat they're experts at that have to learn something new so that's fair oh you're gonna take a young kid and replace me because 
You know what I mean? It's not Fortnite now and all of these things. And, and I, that fear, I understand where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. But with the digital transformation, it's about making your life easier. Right. right? Mm-hmm. We, we actually did an experiment uh, a couple of weeks ago. I spent a whole day in the metaverse, VR headset. I need to go to the doctor to see my eyes now because it's like seven, eight hours. Right. But mm-hmm. basically, came up with my question is this something that you could reasonably do? On an ongoing basis so mm-hmm. if you're differently abled or in a situation where you really can't get into an office can this improve the way you work on a regular mm-hmm. basis and those are the types of things that jtb has to not just think about but tackle so we have to be the thought leaders for these things then to say oh does this make sense does that make sense is this something mm-hmm. feasible for us i i admit i found it very easy to do certain types of work in it yeah but yeah, I can't imagine doing that longer than maybe two hours. I'm, right. I'm scared. But it's just for us to educate them and for them to understand that this is not something that's going to stop you from being able to provide for your family or stop you from progressing to an organization. And it doesn't matter how old you are. The idea is this technology can support you. Everyone uses smartphones now. Everyone uses tablets. Mm-hmm. We're using pretty much the same types of technology. It just depends on how close you are to that level of tech yeah so, uh, we do also i believe our responsibility to educate persons about no don't be afraid of digital transformation it's, it's gonna make your life a lot easier yeah and you know right. what I, I, f- I found that coming coming from canada it's coming from canada and, and coming to trinidad i've had to deal with this with this paradox because i've lived my whole life in canada and over there the pace is 10 times faster um, you need a lot more money, a lot more resources to just survive your day to day. We don't get long vacations. You're getting two weeks if you're lucky, three weeks if you're, you know, seniority. But when we want to slow down, we come to the Caribbean. And we come to the Caribbean because the Caribbean is slower. And the paradox that I've had to I've had to, you know, kind of balance out is mm-hmm. People live in this "quote unquote" slower pace, and in order for it to remain slower, they're 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 removed a bit. So people do enough education to get into their job, and they get their house, they get their good job, they get their car, and and that's it. They 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 don't want to learn no more, right? But now we're being thrusted into this position where the rest of the world globalization is happening. They're dictating the pace, and we have to keep up. But trying to get people out of that mindset now that you can't just go to school, get your one degree, get your one job, and work that job for the next tw- or for the rest of your life and be set. Getting people out of that mindset, I don't have the answer to how we do that <laughs> because it's but generations it that we that we're we're going up against. You know, what do you what 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 are some ideas that you guys have that that could probably you know just start helping the the generations kind of transition out of what we have known for our, our whole entire life in the caribbean mm-hmm. yeah. but but guess what so um i just gonna take this a little bit so covid has changed a lot of that mm-hmm. um we were forced to digitally transform um the way we we go to we get our food you have um what they call him no we call it hugo and seven crave the food delivery companies, you know, you sit in, we had lockdown for weeks um, in Jamaica. We had no choice but to use the technology. Um, the government of Jamaica actually has an initiative mm-hmm. to get SMEs digitally transformed through the Development Bank of Jamaica. So my company is also involved with the DBJ to kind of provide that. So the persons who are afraid, maybe because they don't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. So we're actually put programs in place to enable the, the change to do it for them. I'm giving you a grant to get this done. Wow. So they have grants like um, would be at a minimum of maybe equivalent to three thousand US dollars yeah. to get your business online. So create an e-commerce website to do your marketing and promotion to get your accounting systems online. You're looking at now getting the digital tools to get. So persons are really really taking that up. So not just us at the JTDA who are, you know, enabling that, but the government is also a part of that digital transformation. So it's not it's not as bad as it used to be. I think COVID has changed a lot of that. And also the government has their program to digitally transform the small and medium sized businesses. So we focus on a business standpoint. 
and with the business digitally transform and also the way in which we access even going to the doctor you have to go into the doctor you know to get right. your eyes checked you know now we're using um, telemedicine so now you call into your doctor's office on your you know your laptop or your tablet you really get your prescription so to me i i, I love what covid um has done um to do it i, I really love that's, it like that's my, my son lining, is yeah. in he's in his room all day going to college overseas like before you had to go there you don't have to do that anymore so i think that i think it has changed since covid and and i've seen it myself both at, at the office both in in which how we interact with the service and goods that we used to access even yeah. banking a lot of banks in jamaica have actually closed um, um their doors for traditional brick and mortar because of you no know, there they have the the, the the terminals for persons to go online so they're pushing you to go online to, to get your transaction done so i think covid has changed that a lot i'm not sure what the landscape is in trinidad at this time but for jamaica i, I think that in the last two years we are leaps and bounds ahead um, based on the government initiative and everything else we're just forced to do it we had a lot i don't know if you had lockdowns in Trinidad during COVID, but we were locked up for a while and we had no choice but to utilize um, these services to access our food, to access our daily um, doctor's visit. You no, know, the government enabling the small businesses to get under, giving them money. Look, I'm giving you this money, get your business online, get your, your processes automated. We don't need persons in the office anymore. And a lot of them are taking it up. Yeah, I think we we in Trinidad, we literally look on and see the initiatives, yeah. the announcements, mm -hmm. the things that are happening in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we just keep on trying to signal to our leadership, hey, mm -hmm. copy their homework between Barbados and mm -hmm. Jamaica. Copy mm -hmm. their copy. Just copy it. Mm -hmm. Bring it here. Do something. Because for us, we are still in that space where people mm. have just been waiting to just go mm. back to pre-COVID times. And mm. that has been the yeah. message that the government has been handing out. We have not been mm. getting the same type of um, messaging from a Barbados or from a Jamaica mm. in mm -hmm. Trinidad, right? A uh, perfect mm. example, perfect example. Just last week, mm. one of the, the biggest fintech in the Caribbean, we pay, mm. he he was interviewed about the state of doing business in trinidad and mm -hmm. the headline the headline read that trinidad has too much red tape and that has mm -hmm. that has pretty much killed innovation from happening in trinidad and mm -hmm. he had to move his headquarters to jamaica right so we mm -hmm. pay headquarters which is a trinidad company has left mm -hmm. trinidad shores to do everything and work in partnership with the Jamaican government to build WePay because it couldn't be done under Trinidad. And the, the entire country was in an uproar because how could he say that about his country? But it's, it's the truth. So right before, right before we jumped on to, to, to talk, he actually held a press conference to clarify some of the things that he was talking about. And I didn't get to catch it, but I'll see if I can catch the replay. But again, he, he just painted such a crystal clear, um, you know, lay of the land for what is happening in trinidad and you know jamaica is is leaps and bounds ahead as you said and i'm glad that the jtda is spreading across the caribbean because if our leadership isn't going to do it we still have to get access to skills we still have to get access to groups we still have to grow we still have to transform so partnering and joining organizations like yours mm -hmm. is going to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it, it's going to be a big step in the right direction. Following that, I, I, I wanted to ask you guys, what do you what do you guys feel are some of the key skills that are mm -hmm. in need right now for digital transformation that, you know, people listening could start to even, you know, Google, do the research on? Because mm -hmm. we're still getting the old school message. Uh, go to mm -hmm. school. Become a doctor, mm -hmm. become a lawyer, become a pilot, but we're mm -hmm. not really getting a lot of information about some of the new skills that are needed mm -hmm. or some of the new industries. So mm -hmm. in your experiences, what are some of the mm -hmm. skills that are booming right now that we sorely need in the Caribbean right now? Well, I can, I can take one, Stacy can take the other and Adrian. But for me, um, one of the skills that are leading and even when I I contact like the universities, you know, looking for skills and they are no, we are, we are in need of so everything. What you're doing, Kara, mm -hmm. that is, that is the big thing right now. 
um, digital marketing. I'm telling you, they now have a course. Persons are now signing up for that through the universities here. They now have that. So digital marketing to get everything digitized and to, to get your business online. There, that's where it's at. If you have a business with that right now and offering it, trust me, you are. You are, you are. <laughs> so what you are doing, the whole digital aspect of digitizing and marketing your business, e-commerce, putting your business online, that's where it's at at this time. Yeah. Stacey? I was going to have Adrian go. Um, okay. But so largely because um, so I sit on a, a, a government task force that is focused heavily on um, digital services so that we can export our services, mm. because I think that's mm. also something that is a huge opportunity for, for the Caribbean. Mm. And, um, and so with that external, that global outlook, the roles, so to speak, that are in high demand are both in the knowledge process outsourcing area, as well as mm -hmm. in the information and technology outsourcing. So you're talking about, um, in the ITO, you're talking about cybersecurity is huge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. QA testers, mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. Technology project managers, do you realize mm -hmm. that every single everywhere in the world is going through transformation? They need yeah. somebody to manage them, Exactly. Right? So the technology project managers, and of course, once you need a project manager, you need several business analysts. So mm. tech analysts, um, engineers, um, mm. web developers, we kind of talked about the e-commerce, mm. a huge part of what's um, right. missing in the e-com space is just having persons mm. to support that, that website. Um, and mm. it, goes, it goes on from there, you know. Um, mm. But the only other piece that I would say that I think is a, a huge missing, um, mm -hmm. even in, here in Jamaica, is the mindset mm -hmm. for digital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can learn till thy kingdom come. If you do <laughs> not have a digital mindset and a digital mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. it ain't happening. Bravo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Adrian shaking his head. <laughs> Adrian, talk yeah, to us. Yeah, well, I covered everything, so I guess I'll focus on the skills. Yeah. So even though we're talking about technology and digital transformation, mm -hmm. yeah, you have to be able to manage yourself and manage your project. Like Stacey said, you have to be able to mm -hmm. create the content creators mm -hmm. are so important. Creative industry. I have staff yeah. that don't have degrees. And because I don't need a degree to do specific jobs. You can learn what you need to learn if you really want to do it, right? Mm. So it's more the soft skills, in my opinion. Okay. Allow you to be diverse, to change professions. Mm. I've probably changed professions like three times. And mm. I'll do it to solve problems. Mm -hmm. I think that's the truth. <laughs> so create content, be creative, problem solve, and be able to actually manage yourself, project management. Those three things, I mm -hmm. think if you find somebody who has all three, <laughs> next year, in fact, keep them. <laughs> that's a that's a fact. That's a fact. I remember. I, I think. I think. I was. I've. I've been blessed that my first real job. I. I. I, I like to say when I turned eighteen was working at a telecoms a telecoms company in Canada, and mm -hmm. the internal motto of the company was embrace change. That was what was mm -hmm. uh, plastered across all the HR books. Embrace change, embrace change, embrace change. And I never really took it in or really internalized it until um, I'm, working in, I'm working in the smartphone industry and smartphones are changing all the time. The prices, the rules, the everything is changing all the time. So I remember coming in where after like my first two months on the job, or no, not even two months, it was like my first month, I had the specs of every phone, I had the plans, I had everything written. I had everything memorized. I had my flow. I'm new. I'm like, I'm good. I, I finally came in confident. And I remember just walking in and seeing all of the signage change, all the plans change, phones, end of life removed from. And I'm like, but where are these phones going? They're still good. And like, nope, <laughs> new phones coming in. New plans have just rolled out. New, and I'm like, I'm like, but I've just memorized everything from since the start and my manager's like let me come to the back 
And he opened up the HR book and he's like, you see this? Embrace change. He's like, don't fight it. Embrace it. Because <laughs> once it's gone, it's gone. We are moving right. forward and things change. So, and I just got so accustomed that things just change in that tech space so much, so fast. Mm-hmm. You just never, you know, you, you never get accustomed. You never get comfortable. So when change mm-hmm. happens, you know, you just roll with it. And then coming mm-hmm. out to the Caribbean now, like I said, we're so accustomed to stability. Things don't mm-hmm. change too often. Now we are thrusting everybody into mm-hmm. warp speed, into the digital age. And Stacey mm-hmm. Ann said it. Stacey, Stacey I almost, I mix, I, mix, I blended it with Ann and Stacey. <laughs> Stacey <laughs> said it where she's like having the digital mindset. Because if you don't have that mindset, the skills almost do not matter. I 100% agree. All right. So do we have any closing remarks? Well, before we get to closing remarks, what about BizTech? What's happening with BizTech this year? What's happening with BizTech? <laughs> I was about to say, BizTech is happening. It's on and popping in November. November Dates and right. such will be released very soon. Save the date mm-hmm. and early bird, you know, tickets and all these things. Yes. I'm really, I'm really pumped about what we're going to create, um, create this year. Because last year was, um, or actually the year before that, I think, was the first time we really made the push to get other Caribbean leaders on. Um, right. And in 2021, last year's, my big dream was to have a fireside chat with Mia Motley. If she watches this, I'm still, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to write to you again. I wrote, I called, I mean, I stalked that office, okay? (laughs) Ultimately, I couldn't get on her calendar. You know, it was the same time where all of that um, American greetings and all that kind of stuff was happening. Right. But I really think that this year, is another opportunity for us to extend the invitation to our mm. Caribbean leaders. I would love to have the, the transformation minister on from mm. Trinidad to come and address yep. some of these concerns yeah. that persons yep. have. You know, I would love to have our St. Lucia, our Grenada, our Guyana, you know, like, Guyana, like it, right. it's for us to start creating these conversations on a Caribbean scale, you know, it's not just when you have, you know, the IDB, IADB rolling in that everybody should get together. Right. This is a community that wants to know these are the people that the policies matter to. Right. So BizTech is going to be that stage this year. Um, this year is Knowledge Forum year, um, where usually you right. have a lot of training along with the big conference. Right. And so aside from people being able to learn about digital culture and hang out on the Transformation Institute, you know, um, we're really looking to see that thought leadership. Where are we headed in the Caribbean? Where are these leaders taking us? Um, right. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> right. So the theme, the theme this year, um, Karen, is creating a sustainable digital future. That's the theme yes. this year for this I like, I like, the, I like that name. Digital future. Yes. So that is where it's at so we are aligned we're we are looking forward to this the government is clearly on board with regards to digital transformation Mm -hmm. so um we are here for it you know wonderful wonderful adrian did you have anything go ahead yeah it's gonna gonna be an experience Mm -hmm. this is about everybody's inside so no we're not last year we did a virtual forum now you know the country is open back up so we're going to be outside so it's going to be huge this year and very 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 exciting and we're looking as stacy said to invite other persons from from other caribbean markets other leaders to to be a part of this tech this year yeah i'm gonna I'm have to book my ticket my birthday is yeah. in december and and i plan to be eating jerk chicken on a beach so i might just have to book it a little bit earlier and come in <laughs> Uh, yep. Wonderful. So as so as we wrap up, I want you guys to, you know, give your final reason as to why, you know, you want the SMEs to jump on the JTDA website and join the membership program. Give us your final reason and thoughts on joining the JTA as, as we come to a close. Mr. President. Right. Sure. President. So, so you, you know, yeah. Adrian. So. <laughs> Backstory, grew up in Jamaica, love Jamaica, 
But if I had an organization like this that I could actually go to and learn, I, I would probably have a Nobel, Nobel Prize by now. Maybe. Mm. Listen, the idea with the J today is provide these MSMEs an understanding of what they can do, the technology they can actually access to. And the big thing is we put our money on our time or our motive is about being as practical as possible to help these businesses. Not about just telling you one, five steps or whatever. It's guiding it a better, better future for your organization. Something again, sustainably in a digital economy, in a global economy, and allowing you to support your clients, yourself, your family. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. And where do we go to register? JTD.org. Wonderful. So I'm going to have that linked in the show notes so people can go and they can click on it. Um, and if you're watching mm -hmm. over on YouTube, you're going to be able to see that in the description as well. We'll link that mm -hmm. for you guys to go and register. So Adrian, Twitian, Stacy, I just want to thank you for coming in and having a conversation with us, uh, the Digipreneur family. This was very enlightening. Again, these are some initiatives that we need, especially the Alliance Fund. I can't tell you how much that is needed because for me, that's one of the top questions I get asked. And I'm constantly trying to show people, you know, how to start their business if you can't get the funding. What are different elements that we can do of the business if you don't get the funding? But the reality mm -hmm. is, I'd rather them have the funding <laughs> and go yeah. forth and build what they want to build, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So thank you guys for coming and, uh, and, and talking to us. Um, we will, I'll have your links to your LinkedIn profile. So if anybody has any questions and they want to reach out to you, um, you guys right. will be able to go and check out the LinkedIn profiles, shoot them a message. Mm -hmm. We'll link mm -hmm. the JTDA website so you can check it out and the membership program. And mm -hmm. yeah, that is it for us for Digipreneur Live. Thank you guys for listening in. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel jump jump over on social media i'm over at instagram uh tiktok we've been tiktoking a while now linkedin facebook at karen rose don't forget to check out the digipreneur.fm website and to continue to learn about building your digital presence and monetizing check out the karen rose.com website that's it from us everybody have yourself a wonderful evening take care thanks karen. thanks karen bye everybody bye, bye. You've been listening to the Digiboss, Karan Rose. We hope your notepad was filled after this episode. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. The learning doesn't stop, folks. And to make sure you don't miss any gems from the Digiboss, go over and follow him on all social media platforms at Karan Rose. Folks, don't just sit there with a notepad. We need you to implement at least one thing into your business before the next episode. That's the only way your business levels up. Thanks for listening to Digipreneur FM. Now, Go be great.